Hey guys, this is John and Austin. And this is another episode of the Meat Just Sticks podcast brought to you by Walton's, where you can get all your sausage making and jerky making supplies. Walton's.com. Everything but the meat. Nice. We do need to find that jingle and play it every once in a while on here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great jingle. Yeah, It'll just be my drop. Everything but it's, it's just your, your typical corny jingle. It's not corny. The number of people when I first started working here and meeting more people, they would say, oh, yeah, Walton's, everything but the meat. And they'd do the song. they go, yeah. everything but the meat. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's corny. They just listen to the radio. That's all. Yeah. That's all that means. Um, all right, so uh, we are back. This is the first podcast after what I'm calling the <laughs> the <laughs> what something I would you could call it the uh, Valentine's Day massacre if it happened just a little bit later, but the April the gift card tea party something uh, gift know, card something not tea not, party's not bad not bonanza. That'd be yeah, that'd be better. So I added up all the gift cards and it was uh eleven hundred and eighty six dollars. Don't reveal the total. What's the Brett listens to these? I'm sure he could. What's the giant machine you stand in and just grab money and shove it in your shirt? That's what we were doing yesterday. <laughs> what is that called? It does have a name. Walton's is, is it called it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Slash live. So for anyone who didn't join us for the live stream, Austin and I have decided that instead of starting at five, we would start at eight for the gift cards. Then we threw darts to multiply that amount. And we did this a month ago and it worked swimmingly. But we didn't hit anything of value and we hit a lot of things we of had, value. We were hitting things <laughs> left and right. It all started with Anarchy Dave. I liked the nickname, so I threw it at the See, bullseye yeah. and then somehow got a triple 18, which was $492. Then Austin hit a double 19 for someone. It was a cool $302. There's another 190 or in there. It mm -hmm. was just, we were giving out huge gift cards. So we've made some adjustments. There will be no more triples. Uh, we're discussing whether or not there will be doubles. There but might not be uh, number values. We might go <laughs> oh, to yeah, a, a picture format. Yep. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that idea. I like that idea too. So instead of having, um, you know, we're giving away a gift card, we're giving away a grinder. Like a grinder would be, I don't know, triple 19s, something like that. Yeah. So it'd be, it, yeah, it'd be fun. It's actually, we could run through my budget just as quickly doing that. Well, no, like I, I don't, maybe each ribbon gets either like prize, no prize, prize, no prize, prize. And then each thing is a, a piece of equipment. So to be honest, you could always, you could also have like a fallback on it and like, hey, this is a, uh, I don't know hundred dollar vacuum sealer but someone's like yeah i don't want a vacuum sealer i already got a nice one i just want a gift card so you say this or like a what default fifty dollar gift card or something okay so yeah i would feel bad if it was like prize no prize prize no prize well what I if would you feel bad what if you kept it like instead of starting five dollars we just do a dollar and then the multipliers what's the most they could get like what's the highest amount i guess you could get on a 60 triple 20s boom baby sounds yeah. good to me what I don't even remember now. It's I mean, it's only been like two months since we, just three months, two months, three months since we were doing it. But what was our typical go to gift card, anyways? Fifty dollars. Yeah. Well, at fifty dollars, we can give away a lot of gift cards, right. And not yeah. like break that thousand dollar mark yeah. and blow through our budget. Oh you know what would be sweet is if you add up that number of whatever you know the total is your dart you get, and it goes into a bigger pool that then just keeps growing throughout the live streams, and then there's like a big prize instead of an individual live stream prize so it's like an end of the year prize but i don't know what that a total okay would be. i don't know what's we're doable. gonna play with that idea <laughs> offline because i like it and i can think of cool graphics for it to that roll, then yeah, things, also we can keep it showing can build it can roll uh -huh. it's like a, it's like a lottery build, so we yeah. just push it like mm -hmm. so we do our normal stuff but we keep track of everything and somehow we use that just a bottom rocker i think we get people interested to too. fill yeah. up and then we do it for our big uh Monday live stream. Oh, thanks. Like, so that's where we, ah, yeah. So instead you. of having like an overall media budget, like we can <laughs> just have a gift cards to give away budget. And if you use it, we use it. If we don't, it rolls over to the next month. And so on, on, the, on like this month, we give away our monthly budget. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> on other months, like the other, like l month before we didn't, we yeah, didn't we it wasn't didn't. that bad. So yeah. we would have had some to roll over to another month. Right. And so you can like, yeah, you build yeah, up yeah. and you could end up with, uh, we could get to the end of the year and thanks Black Monday and go, guys, we got three grand to give away. Yeah, we're going for it. it. Yeah. 
Okay, I like this. We'll cool. figure this yeah, out. This is what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> we cool. like we like the darts a lot, I guess. I described Austin as looking at me earlier like a great white shark if he asked if he could eat some of these sausages because we were going to do a thing with them. He's very hungry, hasn't eaten today. So I have in front of you a hot Italian and a regular Italian. I want you to try this one first and tell me whether you think it's the hot or the regular. Well, we're taking some Prilosec OTC or whatever. No, but I forgot to take my uh, pills I'm supposed to take with lunch. Oh, okay. And so this is now so my this lunch. Is now your lunch. So. That's fine. All right. So try this one first. Do you want a knife? What no, are you planning no, no, on no. doing here? No, he no. just started rolling it towards it. I'm a value. I got to figure out what something is. No, gonna... no, no. You're doing this by taste. Oh, oh, maybe it's a blind test. Yeah, I knew this should have happened. He, Patrick actually did say something about that. <laughs> so I cooked these on the camp chef in the back at 325 degrees. Um, they didn't really get any char on them i guess which are 325 is a little bit low for but i was shocked at how just hey how good can you catch can you display these absolutely so what could have been right so annoying <laughs> so this is what's known as a kapool um, mute button so right now you wouldn't have to be hearing austin chew because he could be pressing this button the problem is every time you press <laughs> this button you hear it in the microphone it goes pop and it blows out our board not blows out but peaks yeah. our board so we're looking for another option i'm gonna be saying if anything, like, yeah the, austin you could eat all of these that's he looked at me one? like a child who doesn't know if he's supposed to have something or not. slowly move <laughs> that's the other one no no, no. Yeah, you sure. have to guess first was that the hot or was that the mild oh, that's not fair that's how we're doing it oh, oh come on well, i'm gonna say that was the hot explain to me your reasoning behind that Spice. Because it has a bit of spice to it, but nothing from Excalibur by default, unless it's like Inferno right. or something like that, is like insanely hot. If it sounds like there should be some heat to it, it's not going to burn. It's not going to melt your mouth off. Um, it should just have a, a good spice to it, and that has a spice to it. Is that your final answer? Yeah. You were correct. Okay. But it does need more heat, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not hot. Like, to <laughs> me, like, I don't know, like... I don't know how else to describe it. Like, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to lack for words. If my my mom hates spicy food, if she was to eat that, she'd go, I can't eat that. Too it's hot. too hot. Gotcha. But. Yeah, the same people who think Willie's is like, oh, I can't eat that. Yeah. Willie's has a spice to it. Yeah, but it's. But it's not hot at mm -hmm. all. Now, you have to be seriously spice adverse to to think Willie's is too spicy. I used to tell people all the time that Habanero barbecue wasn't hot until we almost killed a lady at <laughs> Pheasant Fest. Do you remember that, Patrick? She, I think she got. She a came back and she was pepper. all red. She's like, "It's so hot." I was like, "Ma'am, you have I'm like you have a problem." I think something's going on. So, in general, which one do you like better? And be, remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. <laughs> No, nobody got that quote. I wish I did. The Prince's Bride. Oh. You've never seen The Prince's Bride? It's got oh, no. All right, no, no, no. Listen, please. We'll, Watch we'll it we'll and stop then determine, this determine right. at what point. <laughs> determine if you think it's accept or acceptable for Leo. Because it is the greatest like kids movie of all time, I think at least. Fred Savage is in it. It's so. on. It's awesome. You've seen it parodied for sure. You definitely have seen it parodied. It's one of those. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You, you killed, killed my father. father. Prepare to <laughs> die. <laughs> no, Dude, no please idea. Please watch it and tell me. If I don't know. You'll do, let do we need to? It. Do we need to revisit like the movies thing? Because we we did like what top ten list with you, me, and Patrick one time. Yeah, and our lists were very different. Very. Like, the three well, of us are you gave me too much time to think about it. It's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> But wait. Real quick, the new A24 movie coming out called Civil War. I've, I saw somebody say that is the best on screen combat ever done. I think, oh, that sounds awesome. That does sound awesome. Um, I think the marketing for it was like oddly fantastic because I had no clue. I go, what is, all right, I know A24 stuff is green. The name Civil War is intriguing, but the fact that I wasn't seeing anything about it was kind of cool. It was, it was doing a Blair Witch thing. I was sure. like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And then when I did see someone, I go, oh, it's Green Army Men. What is it? Oh, it has that one guy like in it. Oh, I let me stop watching about it. Hold on. Back up. Back yeah, up, Patrick's back up. a big no, does not want to watch. Um, I got to. I have to be enthralled. Previews. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Because he wants to see everything like for the first time there. And he's I probably try, right. I try to. All right, let's get off movies. Let's get off movies. What? Let's back to this. He, you cut, he brought it up. <laughs> you cut it lengthwise. <laughs> what were you hoping to find there? See if you can see a whole lot of seasoning particulate inside yeah. of it. Okay. But you never answered which one you thought was your favorite. Um, That's a hard thing. I, I mean, this is horrible. Probably TMI, but... Uh, we'll see tomorrow. Ha. Like, does How your stomach I, my stomach as I as I get older, like I just don't handle things that are spicier like at all. Are and you so thirty four now? Uh, thirty four. So like I don't know if I, I ate get like older. <laughs> I'm yeah. I know. I'm You're not, still I'm not, in your I'm prime, old, sir. I, know. I think but, we have a lifetime spicy threshold, and you chewed three years probably is what it is. That's what I'm thinking about me. Just be salt <laughs> for him. I'll know. I'll, I'll know by the end of the podcast. Does my stomach feel fine? Does okay. it not? If it's spicy, it's going to sit there, and it's going to just make my stomach not feel great. Okay. But when we're done with this, if patch, it, yeah. sorry, if if, uh, if if I could choose, I would say I would say the hot one as long as I feel great. Yeah, I in feel an like hour. I'm going to make some more of the hot one at some point, and I'm going to put in some more like. Uh, red pepper flakes. I think it could use being a little bit hotter. At the end of this, Patrick has some barbecue sauces in there that we don't sell, so I'm not going to promote them right now. Right. But you got to dip this hot one in one of them. It is. Interesting. It's fire, as the kids are saying. (laughs) I think we're six years too late to that, probably. No, we're right on time. (laughs) I'm I'm 43. Six years too late is the perfect time for me to catch on. That's appropriate, yeah. Yeah. I've started getting my kids to say stuff like that. And okay. it's, it's so entertaining. Allie is the one that started it. What was Allie. it? She got, she was getting, was, I think she was getting Gemma to maybe say, no, I don't know. I, I'll have to come back with it for next week. See what uh, it's the, just the, the words that the, the kids right. in quotes are using nowadays. I was so, like, whatever. But it's, it's funny then when I have my kids like do it, I laugh at it. I'm glad we brought up the, hot italian sausage stuff because like that that sounds like it should be a more heavily pushed like seasoning concept you know like hot italian yeah for sure like i didn't even know like until we until you said we're doing one i didn't know we offered a hot italian so i was like but is there a next level that we can introduce and then call it hottest italian well that's what that was my next question is like what is that what would that be called to where it would be like ah that's a very appropriate italian heat kind of I don't know if there's a one. The Monica Belushi. Oh, okay. Right? The, I don't know. You I was trying to think of a good one there, and that's the best. What do we, wasn't the Cudigy in Italian? We carried that for like two years. Yeah. Do we not have that anymore? We don't have it. We oh. got discontinued. And I'm pretty sure that got discontinued yeah. by us, not by Excalibur, for <laughs> once. That'd be strange. Ooh. That's disappointing because, yeah. I liked it. I remember that, and yeah. I, I remember I liked it. Oh, it was good. Here's that. Super hot. Come on time. in, Brett. Oh, hello. And then Come on in. Oh, what just, a, just a we have a visitor. Oh, Interrupting the in. podcast, but you know. <laughs> no, no, no. You have whatever you wanted. We want to know. This is, is like if, 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 oh, we, if you if get a phone call fired. on air, you got to answer it. So yeah, Brett opened yeah. the door. So we're staring at him, waiting for him to tell That's us. As long as fault. he's going to blame me for not having the light as on. As long as no. <laughs> is that what you're going to say? I know. I told you. I can tell you when people are getting ready. Hold on. There is a reason for that, Brett, is because I went up and turned off. The other lights, so he had no reason to get up to do it. <laughs> oh, so, so if anything, it's on me. As long as none of us are getting fired, tell us what you need. <laughs> Come on. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I, get up. I thought I was like, wait a minute. One John, of us is you getting fired. do this in front of everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, wanted, I just had a question for Austin, but it was. Oh, okay. So. I just, the light wasn't on, so I came in. You're supposed to come in if the light's not on. You are supposed to come in. It'll make, And you can come in whether the light's on or not. It'll make the description right. now, that's all. Okay, we got hot Italian. <laughs> well, I'm here. Oh, he wants some food. Hot Italian. Hot Italian, mild Italian. Okay, how about mild? How about it? Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Do you think you would take a bite and say it tastes awful even if it did? No. No, Brett's very good at that. No, I love this. Stuff. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Take I made it. Piece of hot Italian so I can, he can take that one. He's got okay, it. He doesn't have to cut no, it. No, I want just like a bite. That's not just a bite? No. He's what, John? Not if it's hot. Not it's not hot. hot. <sighs> Haven't you had our hot real. Italian? Yes, but that's why I'm making sure you didn't so, do something funky. Oh, I didn't do anything <laughs> funky to it. We were just talking <laughs> about doing something funky to it. And uh, adding more uh, like red pepper or something to make it hotter. Because it's got a spice to it. But it's not but it's hot. Not. Excuse me, as I'm starting to burp, um, it's it's hot enough that it is messing with me. You're not bit. sniffling, so well, it's not I bad. That's true. Yeah, not, if it was hot, you'd be sniffling. Yeah, so. oh, but don't it's, tell yeah. him now. Come on, it's over, dude. But, you didn't get the hiccups. Nope. I don't get the hiccups off spicy. I get the hiccups very easily off of laughing, but that's that's it. 
So not last night, because I was out no matter what last night, but two nights ago, my 200-pound dog woke me up for, by hiccuping in his sleep in the bed. It <laughs> shook. Bed. It was shaking the bed. <laughs> like, I'm like, what is... And then I... And the whole bed is moving. Did you get annoyed and kick him out? Or just... No, I laughed. What are you going to do? All right, thanks, That's Brett. Uh, Patrick, did you flip on the light? I will now. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty funny how you knew exactly what he was oh, going to yeah, say, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what were we talking about right as he came in? Oh. All right, whatever. Shoot, I don't know. Let's just move on. All right, so... Uh, for the next live stream, we will have gift cards again. We will have darts again, but it will be slightly different because we can't afford to do too many more of those. Um, I continue to eat my nothing but meat and cheese diet. Um, I am down eight pounds in nine days. That's pretty well, darn good. Well, he's only consuming 450 calories a day. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not accurate at all. I said this on the live stream, but last weekend I grilled two packages of brats, an andouille and a hot Italian. I bought i thought it was a pound but it must have been two pounds of ground beef i made them into burgers grilled those and then i grilled three chicken breasts and i ate it all that weekend oh you lied to me you said you're gonna have eggs dude did you have oh no i've been eggs? having eggs as well thank god so eggs um shredded mexican cheese frank's red hot but here's the the new secret just a little bit of parmesan cheese on top of all that just a little bit what's that dude? i don't know but it makes them better <laughs> Like legitimately, it has taken <laughs> eggs from like, all right, I like eggs. My body's like, get more. Parmesan is one of the greatest. I use it as a seasoning, like not even as like a cheese. It's a, it's it's the greatest addition to about every dish known to man. I don't know opinion. that I disagree with that. If there's one thing I could add to most dishes, because sometimes every once in a while I'll put it on my pizza. I put it on every time I have sauce. I use rice. I used to put it on salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do too? Yeah. Oh, okay, so not that weird. Great on salad. No, yeah. not oh, that weird. Well, it's a, a Caesar salad. No, 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 regular salad. Uh -huh. Any salad. Yeah. Why, why are we discriminating here, people? Come <laughs> well, on. Generally, <laughs> I discriminate against salads. <laughs> I just don't like them. I, I, I saw a picture the other day of a wheel of Parmesan cheese. Yeah. I thought that all wheels of cheese were like, like flat discs. Oh, no. And no, I, no, I no. didn't know that I was missing the boat, that yeah, the yeah. wheel of cheese is like multiple of <laughs> oh, what I thought was a wheel of good cheese. Lord, yeah. I showed this picture, I showed this picture to my wife and I'm like, I was like, this is what I want for my birthday. I was like, I don't want anything else. Like, is my birthday is like a month from now. I told her, I'm like, buy me this, buy me this wheel of cheese. I'll that be happy. Very expensive. I, a full wheel of Parmesan cheese. John, I'm, I'm, Listen. I'm worth it. Come on. <laughs> Those are in people's wills to their kids over, you know, I'm a hundred percent that barrels of olive oil. Like they keep those things for a certain amount of time until they're prime. And like, nobody touches it until that date. It's not like if you gave me a bottle of wine and was like, wait four months, it'll be just one night. And we'd be like, no, I want it now. I don't care if it'll be better then. Like they put them down in like climate controlled areas. Hmm. So that's a big ask for your wife. I may not want that then. We'll yeah. see. I'm going to do, nah, I gotta do some more research. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's coming out of your guys' account. So. I still want a whole wheel of cheese, though. Well, okay. Moral of the story. We'll get you a whole wheel of cheese. It won't be Parmesan. It can be the cheapest one. Yes, exactly. There. Whatever's the cheapest yep. cheese. Munster or something. Um, but I did also have pizza during Patrick's live stream. So that kind of broke that. Uh, but I was able to get right back on track. I, I'm... I'm I don't know if there's like legitimate studies behind it, but I've always been a, a fan and proponent of like a cheat day actually helps you in the long run because otherwise your body just kind of just kind of settles into here's eh. so yes for normal people i think i do better when i just don't cheat at all because once i cheat once it just starts that well, you uh -oh. just cheated you just cheated you just cheated yeah so i need a schedule you know that's true um so this is day four now right friday night none saturday none sunday none monday none tuesday and today is wednesday Day four of no whiskey. You say none Sunday and whiskey in the same sentence. I said funny. none on all four of those days. <laughs> no, so in you in. I don't think nuns normally drink whiskey anyways. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I did not I was not following. Dude, dude. Sorry. Please um continue. when even when you said N U N, I'm like, that's not how you start to spell Sunday. What is he doing? <laughs> I don't get yeah, it. No, I got you. Um but my bank account, I think, is thanking me more than my <laughs> liver, really. <laughs> were you buying, like, nice if you were drinking stuff. quantities of something, you shouldn't be buying expensive anything. So I was, 
first of all, I wasn't really, I wouldn't call it quantities, but it was like at least one drink a day of whiskey, which you go through it pretty quick, mm -hmm. 750 yeah. milliliter. Um, I bought a really nice whiskey to celebrate something last week, finished that Friday night, finished an entire bottle of champagne for it. Did I send you that picture? <laughs> yes. yes. I laughed because it just, it said USA on the side. I'm like, that's the only thing that had to be there for John to buy that. Didn't matter what yeah. type of drink was inside. I was like, John saw that and was going to buy it. It was a bottle of champagne that had USA printed on the side of it in red, white, and blue. So I took a video and sent it to Austin of me chanting USA, <laughs> popping it open and chugging a, a portion of it. Um, but yeah, no, so no whiskey since then. Uh, in unrelated uh, news, I went home sick yesterday with the worst headache of my life. I'm sure that ha those two things don't have anything to do with them. Uh, Are you feeling better? That from yesterday? Yeah. A uh, thousand percent. Is that not, today, like I have had like one of the worst headaches of my oh, life. Oh, dude. It's so not. it is something. Patrick was out yesterday too. But yeah. uh, so was Walter, who's never gone. So it, it, it's something. Mine, the only thing I can describe when I got COVID that one time and I said it felt like there were fingers digging into my brain, like that's what I felt like all day yesterday. Hmm. I eventually, I don't understand why that's funny. I've never heard it. I, we hang out a lot. I've never heard you say when Hey, you why does he get the good? You now just noticed that? Yeah. Uh, I rigged this up during an episode. Wait, like he's, got the episodes he's got a nice mic stand? We're hands free, baby. He's got the cool one that comes over. It doesn't fit. Wait, did you yeah. only buy one? Yeah, and it doesn't. It, it's not even long enough, really. We bought the longest one we can, but A, I have so, to remove a panel from the front. Uh, so my, he, you can have it. It's already, it's already, it's already had. The, my thing is, this is <laughs> it would block your guys' faces. Yo, it's right here, though. So Now, is that a bad thing? You might be able to convince me. Are we going <laughs> to? You could argue. We're going we're gonna to be all kinds of tangents, and we're going to be very long on this episode, but are we taking the island with us when we move, like the whole thing, or are we just taking the top? You're rebuilding the base, or no, are you taking the whole thing? We're taking the whole thing. This well, base you, is excellent. How are you getting it out the door? I'll unscrew stuff. It's a lot to do. I got it in the door without... I built this on the back deck and then brought it in here. I just no. have to take... Yes, I just have to take the wheels off. Yeah. No. A hundred percent. like 20 I'll dudes that helped carry this, so... It's Wait, a 36 oh my inch God, door. I thought of like the best bet for us. And then I couldn't remember what <laughs> it was. That's why I initially hurt my back and I just have Loser uh, has to get maced by the winner. No. He's done, you've offered that before. He's not going to hurt himself. Dude. He's, un he's not confident in his answer. That's why. Did you have to take the door off the hinges? Nope. Maybe. <laughs> I can't remember. Dude, that doesn't look like that's good. Actually, this—that's looking, this, that's a thirty-six inch door. This from here to here is not thirty-six inches. I don't know. It might well, be close. But we got there. the. Where did we move the rock to? Like the big, the top. We moved it from outside, not directly into here, right? You moved it. You no, this outside. we moved. This was in yeah. here, and then this came and sat right on top of it. Yeah, it was on a cart outside. That's what it was. Cart and we outside. moved the cart, the cart in here. In, here and then listen straight up i'm 100 percent. Yeah. i'm dead serious when i say this is either coming with us or i will find a way to get this to my house we are not leaving this behind way too much time has gone into it and I, honestly i have way too much fondness for it to leave it behind i like like the something will be like, we'll find something to do with it yeah the, the top's cooler everything's the base is amazing i mean it's heavy duty you could duty. just like my dining room table you could hide under this in a tornado and mm -hmm. you, you'd you make it for sure. <laughs> All right. Getting somewhat back on track. Um, we've got the Better Bread or Batter Bowl deal going right now. Uh, that is, if you buy a Better Bread or Batter Bowl from Waltons.com, you get a free large bag of Flavor Crisps Chicken on the Run seasoning. Nick Hall has already taken advantage of that. So he got himself a Better Bread or Batter Bowl and some Flavor Crisp Chicken on the run seasoning. Is that what we call it on the website, by the way? Better bread or batter bowl? <laughs> I mean, do you say it? I'm in love with saying the that. Full name every time. Um, we were talking about this in the media room the other day. Have you ever been to a cook your own steak steakhouse? No. Would you go to a cook your own steak steakhouse? Mm. Like, so here, here's the setup. You've got a bunch of steaks sous vide or whatever to uh, say 100 degrees. And then you're just taking it from there on. You get to choose the temperature of your cooking surface, what you season it with, all of that. Are you just choosing all of that or do you get to go in the kitchen and no, do that? No, you do it. You do it? And there are professional chefs there guiding to help you guide you. Way. 
Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be tempted to just because it would be a fun experience. I feel like it would be like horribly unworth it in the, the cost because they're probably going to market that as an upsell. And it's mm-hmm. if you could go to your, I don't know, just random neighborhood restaurant and get a steak for $30, That's how you're you do probably going to end up paying 45 right. at a restaurant like that for the same thing. But okay, that's how you do it though. Cause I was trying to figure out like what the business model is. Like, how do you actually make that work? And you do it by, you can either just have the chef do it or you can go back there and he'll like walk you through how to, like, you have a quick conversation with him, like, this is how I like my steaks. And he tells you, like, this is what we're going to do to get you there and you're going to do it. I'd pay in, if I didn't already like know how to cook steaks the steaks the way I like, I'd pay 15 bucks one time to go talk to a professional chef and have yeah. him be like, no, you want to do, you know, this, this, and this. Yeah. If it was, if it was like, yeah, the average consumer out there. Oh yeah. It'd be, it'd be a, be great. It'd be a blast. You'd learn something from it. Um, and then you could hopefully repeat that to an extent. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have the same equipment, but you'd at least have some know-how behind it. Yeah. Personally, like for you and me, I'd just look at it and I'm like, we might teach you something. something. Right. Mm. Uh, they, We're they not would still, professional chefs. No, they would still probably teach us something, but we, I don't know, we would have, we would, we would already know more going into it. Right. It wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be worth the full deal, but yeah. I would do it once just to say just I Just to did. do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just to walk out and just like uh, Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, when he walks into Home Depot and that kid comes up to him and asks him, do you need any more help or any help? I can say, I know more than you about everything in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, what most people don't know about ground beef. We're just going to run through a couple of these because, as Austin said, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, nothing other than beef can be added to a product called ground beef. It has to be just beef with no additives. Mm-hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Um, ground beef, beef patties, and hamburger are not the same things. Ground beef, as we just said, is 100% the protein from the animal. Hamburger can have beef fat added, and beef fatties can have defatted chopped beef added as well. So... They are very, very similar, but they're not the same thing. Uh, Never eat raw ground beef unless you're a man like I am. (laughs) Uh, Rinsing, draining, and grease removal are controversial. controversial. They are not controversial. Don't do any of those things. Don't rinse your meat. Don't drain your meat or don't remove the grease. That fat is flavor, and it's good for you. So it's simple as. Uh, Ground beef is often imported. 20 to 30% of all ground beef is imported. I don't like that. That's 20 to 30% of not the, the animal that's here, that's ground somewhere else and brought here. I dislike that. Seems crazy. Do we just eat that much ground beef that we can't produce it here? Or is there another reason? No, we it? send cows other, you know, not cows. We send meat to other places. I think it's all just like this NAFTA nonsense. Or it's like, all right, I'll buy this from you. You buy this from, from me and it looks good, but it's nothing. Could be. It's all shell game. Um, Overcrowding your pot or pan leads to steamed, not cooked meat. Uh, Salt and overneeding make it tough. Interesting on the overneeding one Mm. because it's protein extraction. That's what you're doing. When I yeah, when I used to cook taco meat, I would sit there and just like mash it up, mash it up the whole time, and my texture was always weird. And I'd like, I mean, this is like a long time ago. I didn't understand why. Now, obviously, no, I do not sit there and try to break it up continuously over and over because you get protein extraction quickly as you're starting to cook yep. uh, at you get to a point and it doesn't you can't it's right. not you're not gonna do protein extraction but for that first little bit was getting enough protein extraction is changing texture especially if you've already seasoned it mm-hmm. you add that salt and it's gonna go like that yep uh grass-fed beef is totally d- different flavor profile which i knew but nutritional profile <clears throat> i mean i suppose it makes sense you just got less fat right Oh. But the big thing they said was it's the difference between omega-6 and omega-3 acids. Interesting. So obviously the grass-fed has better omega-3s. Nice. Yeah, but the others taste better. Tastes so. way better. <laughs> uh, ground beef is the top-selling beef style in the U.S. Well, yeah, because you get more ground beef than anything. Like, I don't know, I guess you can you can go through and you can get a little more nitpicky if you were to do a, a custom beef on like, I want this and that. But still, you even yeah. if you like the, the last one I had done, I wanted I wanted as many roasts and yeah. whole muscle cuts as I could get. And you still end up with a ton of ground. And what's meat. the only other thing you really do with beef 
trim that's already been ground. It's really ground and formed jerky and then very few styles of sausages. I mean, almost all sausage. Yeah. Well, hold on, 100% beef um, hot dogs. Hot dogs. That's you get, a big one. You get some, yeah, and some different cuts like that. A lot of times people mix beef, pork, chicken. So there's there's a lot that goes into things like I'm that. I'm having trouble Googling things. Oh, no. So we just got our water back in this. Is it like fixed? It's, it's back back. Oh, sweet. So I went to wash something for the first time and Patrick and Tyler go, oh, no, that's bad. I'm like, that's really bad. So I just like pinched it really hard. He ran and got band-aids and we were just wrapping them over it and over it. I was told him, I'm like, if Austin was in here right now, he'd not be pleased. Did you like, were you washing like slice it on a knife? No. Oh, man. No, it was not good. All right, moving on. Did um, you fill out an accident form? Am <laughs> I supposed I, to? Should I? I shouldn't ask you this on air. No, yeah. it's not that bad. It's not bad enough where I would have had to go to the hospital. Okay. All right. Uh, so a couple of things. We haven't done this in a while. Wanted to go over the the most prolific posters on Meatistics over the last 30 days. Uh, at number one with 220 posts, we have Denny O. Number two is Dave and AZ with 193. C. Davis is 153. Process Head was 142. I am 128. Gus 4416 is 127. And Stephen Winscott is 104. I think we should uh, keep a new tally because I love I love these seeing the numbers on stuff. But like we should do one of like who are the oldest users on Meatistics and go over those like each week on the podcast. Because I'd be first on that list every time. <laughs> <laughs> if you made a post every week, which is not accurate. Um, I'd we, still be the oldest user. That. I can do that. Uh, then I've got, these are new users, users who have made a post in the last, and I just put um, 30 days, but also who have made five or more posts because there were way too many to cover everyone. So all you people who made your first post, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. All of these people happen to be recent additions as well. And when I say recent, I mean within the last year. Is it off on? No, we're good. Okay. Uh, CDIB, which is uh, a guy from Europe, I believe. Yep. Uh, European there is, who's been working in cultured meat for the last 18 years. So crazy. pretty awesome. And, and that gives us another European on the Meatistics map. Uh, he has made eight posts and is a 17 re reputation. Now, he joined February 29th and has already posted eight times. Uh, <laughs> we've got Moonshiner, who joined in 2021 and finally made his first post and has made six. Then we've got Ab Fisher, who was uh, July 2023 and has made six posts since then, with his first post just being recently. And S. Briggs, uh, the 23rd or 2023 November, and has made five posts since last week when he made his first post. So thank you guys for getting off the sidelines and joining. We appreciate it. I love to see when there's like, we have like the stalkers out there. The my guys that thing. have been here for three years and it's finally like, yeah, I'm a post. Lurkers. That's Stalk a, that's stalker a, that's has a, better, a negative that's connotation a, yeah, that's a, that's a for better sure. word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lurkers. lurkers um, yes. And then, all right, let's get on to... Meat Matters. First one, largest egg farm producer in the U.S. has found bird flu in chickens at a Texas plant. The largest producer of fresh eggs in the U.S. said Tuesday that it had temporarily halted production at a Texas plant after bird flu was found in chickens, and officials said the virus has also been detected at a poultry facility in Michigan. Ridgeland, Mississippi-based Mississippi Cal Main Foods said in a statement that approximately 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets, I don't know what a pullet is, about 3.6% of its total flock were destroyed after the infection was found at the facility in Palmer County, Texas. That's in the panhandle. The company continues to work closely with the federal, state, and local government officials and focus industry groups to mitigate the risk of future outbreaks and effectively manage the response. So get ready for your cost of eggs to go back up. Remember when eggs were getting pricey and everybody was freaking out? Huh. That's going to happen again. What What's the new eggs? Oh, you know, we had Dar 4. What's Dar 5? <laughs> I love what? that comment. <laughs> yeah, um, tires. You're, you're asking what's the next thing? <gasps> tires. I mean, tires cars. would be a big one. Because we can't move. Our if vehicles. they really wanted to control people, making tires more expensive or unattainable, would be an easy way to be like, nope, you're not going anywhere. Clean, or yeah. Kleenexes. It's really 
One A, one B. I don't get the reference you're doing. Toilet paper. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, hey, we've we've all been through COVID. We don't want to go through toilet paper shortages again. That was so stupid. Let's not do this. So stupid. I, it'll be interesting to see yeah, where prices go on some of this because you, you look at the gamut of animals from like chickens to beef and you get stuff in the middle of like lifespan and how hard it is to to grow your population and chickens are at the beginning like they're a thousand times easier to repopulate than than cattle not a thousand but um, so does do 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 you see with what is that 1.6 million hens and 337,000 pullets which is like a young hen okay um, you looked it up yeah is that like uh enough to make a reasonable well they change in the market 3.6 percent of their flock yeah but really all it will matter well i guess their hens lay every day what i was thinking of is there if there is going to be a gap in their supply but probably not there could be enough buffer from people like having like what i what i'd call like safety stock people are going to have grocery stores distributors everybody's going to have a certain amount of on-hand inventory yeah. safety stock stuff in waiting and is there enough there to make up that gap and difference and then to rebuild it later on i don't know because it, it sounds like a really big number but we're also talking about you're probably a right. number that's that's just that much bigger <laughs> yeah i don't know why i'm saying that like i'm disappointed i'm very glad that we won't be seeing crazy price now if there's 1.6 million um beef cattle oh. that had an issue oh we would not the world would, would not, not be, be a good place yeah. to be in because there's there's that that's a large percentage of the overall beef herd in the u.s but uh and my freezer is starting to dwindle i'm gonna need to get in touch with zach again <clears throat> all right uh slaughter cows and ground beef one of the typical ingredients in many ground beef formulas is 90 percent lean beef trimmings the wholesale price of 90s reached a record label or level of $338 per hundred weight the last week of March and appears to still be moving higher. Non-fed beef, cull cows and bulls is the source of 90s. Fed beef, fed steers and heifers produce fatty trimmings, commonly reported as 50% lean trimmings. So I just found that that was interesting that even cull cows and bulls are at record prices. So... Um, you'll see a note right there that says, in interestingly, this isn't a change, just a change slash clarification on the way it's calculated. That is in regards to FSIS released, uh, new guidelines for amount of water that could be added to, um, non-processed products. So chicken breast, things like that. Um, and this is when I knew I was in trouble yesterday is the third time after trying to read the first headline, like my brain just wouldn't process it because my head hurt so bad. And I'm like, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, but yeah, turns out it's not a change in anything. It's just a clarification on some guidelines. And they did that because people were struggling to do it correctly. So like, okay, we're going to change how we're, we're having you Make calculate clear. this. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, California's $20 fast food minimum wage balloons menu prices. I mean, that is pretty basic economics um it jumped up the whopper meal jumped up 12 percent as soon as this hit literally the day it hit um and then everything else is between four and 55 percent increases on the menu at burger king in california i don't get fast food at all man the only reason i eat fast food is it's delicious no i'd, oh. I'd ra to be honest i'd rather have something else but like it is is because it is it is fast and like um, and it's food. I can get it to my <laughs> kids and in their face and in their stomachs sooner. Quick. But because uh, I was my my wife was out of town. So I was I've had the kids the last last two days and been doing stuff with them. And um, like one day it was yet or yesterday, yesterday um, went to Chick-fil-A and to get like a now I, got, I upgraded to a large because I'm like, you're going, why do you can't? It's a crime to get a medium. Yes. You're going financially you're, you're getting, irresponsible. <clears throat> Yeah, so getting a large drink, large fry, and just a, I don't know, chicken club. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the total was like thirteen thirty nine. I'm like, I about, I about, I about choked. I'm like, this is ridiculous. That's 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 not worth that. It's at not all. cheap. Nothing. 
There is no cheap fast food anymore. Does Taco Bell still have 99 cent no, items? No, no. It's horrible. Dude, that was like how they I afforded a, to eat when I was just a, out of college. They have an under $3 is what they call it now section. And there's only like eight or nine things. And now everything, it's like your, your hand's almost forced to get their what they're pushing. And we we get that from an inventory. They're like, hey, yep. here's the new eat that. Eat and it's that, like, yeah. oh, hell yeah. And then they draw interest. And so when it comes back, they can actually plan their year out. So I'm like, okay, I get it. But if you don't like what they're pushing out, it is a tough to like, okay, well, let me, does that come with that? No. Then let, all right, let me get, and you're screwed for another 10. Do you think you're saving money? No. It's yeah. Bucks no. Yeah. So there is no cheap meals anymore. Um, getting paid for sustainability while raising beef. To qualify for our program that we're – this is in North Dakota, by the way uh, – that we're doing, you have to be a grazing rancher. Your cattle have to be out grazing for at least six months out of the year. It's not designed for beef on dairy. It's not designed for folks that feed with a feeder wagon their cows 12 months out of the year in a feed yard. This is designed for the ranchers that rely extensively on grazing for producing that – so that's one of the stipulations. Um Really interesting thing. I th it, it has already hit the ranching community, but all of this uh, regenerative farming, sustainability stuff, I think is just going to continue to become bigger and bigger. Um, and I, I'm all for it, to be honest. Uh, it's a, a return to a more natural way of raising animals. So I still want them sent to a feedlot, get them nice and fat at the end, though. So <laughs> let's, make, let's keep that clear. Uh, salmonella outbreak linked to charcuterie meats. Um, these are Beretta, Antipasta, and Bucetta charcuterie. Uh, I just thought this was interesting. 104 illnesses, 27 hospitalizations across 33 states. That's crazy. That is wide ranging, uh, but no deaths. So that's a, a very good thing. Meat prices keep rising as herds shrink. Cost to feed cows increases. The beef pr price is up. The result of Americans' urge to consume hamburger, steaks, and hot dogs, among other food items, and a reduction in the U.S. Supply, supply. And prices could keep rising. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reported earlier this month that cattle prices <clears throat> have become higher because of firm demand, despite the country importing 1.2 billion pounds of beef from international sources the usda reported that beef exports are expected to be down 8.3 percent year over year due to tightening cattle supplies in the united states and tougher global competition from such beef exporting countries as australia here's a question i have for you australia seems like it's a pretty difficult place to keep some animals alive and i don't ever read any crazy things out of australia like we did last year with kansas where all those cows were dead on the side of the farm hmm first of all you don't even think australia is real right <laughs> that's you no. austin said he didn't think australia was real no, he thinks it's I, a psyop i i like conspiracy theories but but that one that, that's too far, too far? Aust australia is real <laughs> I've 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 watched too many episodes with Steve Irwin from back in the day. Like Australia is real, and Steve Irwin is not a psyop. He would never agree to that. He's too wholesome a, a human. All right, um, New Mexico eyes uh, meat inspection act. This is, <clears throat> we're not going to go on to this. It's just uh, interest. Some interesting interesting things going on state by state in how they're doing their um, inspection. I think we're going to start seeing more and more and more deviation between the states where some are going to allow uninspected people to to sell in different uh, ways than others. Did you ever find out what the deal is with your uh, illegal milk? Oh, conflict milk, no, some would call it's, it. No, it's, it's like not. Blood diamonds. <clears throat> I was I was going to have some. My wife forgot to submit the order. Um, so hopefully um i'll have some for next week's podcast cool we'll see we'll try it then researchers raise concerns after observing catastrophic behavior of grizzly bears dramatic exploit ex well, escalation in the number of bears <laughs> dying um 
We have grizzly bears being killed at probably two to three times the rate they were 20 years ago, which begs the question, why? David Mattinson, who studied the bears for 35 years, said in the documentary. I posted a graph down below, which is just just one area of the country, the number of bears from 1987 to now. So go about halfway through that. And what happened around 20 years ago? The bear population exploded. And it did it by more than two to three times. That's why we have so many bears that we're having to kill. So yeah, just That's, wanted to point that to out. Be honest, still, that doesn't seem like a ton of bears, though. I mean, you look at that number, what was it? 217 in 1987 estimated 695 in 2016 that's just in yellowstone though that's oh that's just yellowstone that's just in yellowstone all right and just grizzly bears yellowstone's still big but still grizzlies that's still that's a lot okay yeah that is grizzlies need a a good amount of terrain to like call their own or they'll just fight over it could you raise a grizzly to be like a pet oh yeah and train it and then and then you could just own whatever whatever its range was you were friendly and it destroyed everyone else for you no i don't think you can do that i'm planning like my like i like that apocalypse getaway yeah if you're an apocalypse absolutely it's either a, a siberian tiger or a grizzly bear those two animals polar bear might be a little bit better but polar bears polar bear only eat meat so you would be in direct competition with your grizzly pal the entire time. Whereas a grizzly, you could be like, no, I found you these moths. Grizzly bears love eating moths. What? Yeah. It's weird. It's the first thing they look for huh. when they come out of hibernation. They'll start flipping over rocks and they're looking for moss and the larvae of moss. And they huh. eat like tens of thousands of calories in just that a day. Slimy, but satisfying. Ah, there you go. Uh, wildlife managers report first possible wolf pack sighting in Nevada in over 100 years. So have you heard recently the theory that the reason that they're going ahead and pushing all these wolf pack reintroduction reintroduction is to basically just decimate elk and deer hunting in those areas? No, oh, if that's really the case. Makes sense, cool. though, doesn't it? Because why else? Good, yeah. Man, that would not be cool. What else is it? Is it just, oh, there should be wolves here? I don't know. I don't understand why. But every time something bad happens, whether it be uh, predation of farm animals or, God forbid, predation of a human, anyone who is involved in those rewilding of those wolves should be charged with some sort of crime. And I kind of mean that. Um, trillions of cicadas expected to swarm the U.S. next month. Month? Are you aware of this yet? Uh-huh. The 221-year thing? Yeah. So you have a 14-year cicada and you have a 17-year cicada. Every 221 years, I think it is, those two line up, and this is going to be one of those years. When do cicadas start coming out? I don't actually know this. I don't know. I would say, I don't know if I had to guess, I'd say June. Like, when well, you- May. I don't know. It has come out. Okay. It says cicadas late April or early June. Okay. Well, thankfully, it's not going to coincide with this full eclipse thing or people would be. People are losing it over the full eclipse thing. There's there's a lot of crazy. It's kind of funny to watch. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know how it just like, it's just that's where it goes. This is not a sign. This is not anything. But people are like, the end times are here because of an eclipse. Like, what are we talking about? Anyways, confuses me. All right. You got anything else? Nope. All right. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe and visit waltonzeek.com and meet or waltons.com and meetjustsix.com. I kind of flubbed that because do we normally do that at the end of the podcast? I don't feel like we do. I don't think we do. I think I usually just say, thanks, guys, and push my mic away. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing, but your brain's not not working. Not firing at 100%. All right. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Meet Just Six podcast. To shop everything about the meat, head on over to Waltons.com. To get your meat processing questions answered by experts and enthusiasts alike, head on over to our online community at MeatGistics.com. Waltons, everything but the meat.